So my name is Carol and I work on the admissions team in the registry. And I'm just going to talk to you today about um, the entry routes, the different entry routes into DCU and the CO, CAO application. Um, so the majority of our routes or applications come directly through the CAO. Um, the biggest group of those are the Leave and Search. Um, and following that, then is the QQI, which is like a feeder from level five progression. Um, it's a really good option. Then we have Matures, who is there anyone over 23 years of age. We have Advanced Entry, which are transfer students. So if you're studying, say, business in Maynooth, you've completed successfully completed year one, you can apply then to transfer into year two of a similar business program so it's it's a good option too it's not based on points or anything so if you're doing something similar you've completed year one you can transfer into a, a year two of the similar program then we have the here and there schemes um, who are students from disadvantaged backgrounds or students with disability and then we have international students and um, so they apply directly to dcu that don't go through the cao system and um, to see our courses or um, we call them programs, so sorry, I keep saying that, you probably recognise them as courses. So the courses are available under the main website, under courses and undergraduate, okay? So in there, you'll see a full list of all our programmes. Um, they're broken down by faculty. Um, we have five faculties, so the Institute of Education, we do all the education programmes, business, etc. we do business, science and whatever. So to view each programme, then you click on more and it will have the full list of all our programmes um, that are available there. OK, so, for example, this one, DC 014 is our jazz programme um, they have all the details down here. So every page is similar. They're all set up similar, so it's an, it's very easy to navigate. So for DC014, you can look at entry requirements, the structure, which will give you the breakdown of modules. And um, you'll see points from last year. And if there's um, a contact number, then within the faculty, you can see the detail on that page, right? And then the CAO hub. So this is our main DCU, DCU page. So if you click, I hope I can't, can you see that? Um, so it's D CAO, or sorry, dcu.ie forward slash CAO, and there's huge information in there. You've actually linked to the online prospectus, so you can see again all our programs. Um, and if you want to order like a hard copy, there's an e-copy here under careers and prospectus, but also then you can get um, student recruitment to send you out an actual hard copy. And so that's a copy of there, the... Um, E copy. So in within that, then it's broken down into faculties. So again, you can see all your detail of each program that you might be interested in. And at the back of the book, under summary tables, page um, two two four to two three three, there's um, a breakdown of each program, and you'll see the diff the the entry requirements. You'll also see points from last year. And um, so it's a, it's a nice overview in it one place to see all our programs and all the entry requirements and all the points. Okay. And so that's the CAO end of our say DCU website. So to go into the CAO website, this is where you'll actually make the application. Um, so this is the main web page here um, it's a huge resort so a resource so please you know do get around and, and have a look at all these different tabs and you get lots of information in there. You can apply if you make your application or even start your application by the 20th of January you get it at a reduced fee of 30 euro so you can make that start and you know then you have a bit of time up till the 1st of February to go in and edit it and add programs or you know, just to, to give yourself time, but you're getting it at a reduced rate. I think it's normally 45 euro. Um, so in here as well are important dates. Now I can't stress how much is how important it is to go into those important dates because it'll give you a timeline of what, you, you know, the deadlines for things and how, how you can change your mind up to a certain point. Um, it'll tell you when the rounds are due, the different rounds, <coughs> this, 
different uh, rounds for different entry points. So matures are first, they get their first offers earlier than say leave insert. So everything is stepped out in those important dates. So it's um, get familiar with the page, okay? Um, so the, again, you can see courses here, the same, it'll bring you into CAO or DC, it'll give you the full list of all the HEIs and um, DCU are in there and giving you again, link back to DCU webpage. So um, you can see all our program codes begin with DC and there's a full list in there. The handbook is also a great resource. That's the CAO handbook. Um, so again, it'll give you all the HEIs. So that's all the universities that take part in the CAO. Um, and there's lots of information on deadlines and, and how to apply, um, you know, to walk you through the steps of applying. This system hasn't changed. CAO application hasn't changed in years. So it's, it's very straightforward if you follow and read the instructions, okay? So there's loads of resources here on the left side. Um, so, you know, get to know them. Um, I can't spell out like this. There's actually videos as well that'll show you. So you sh they shouldn't be missing any information. You know, they're, they're straightforward enough. You just need to make sure that you're filling out all the detail and um, follow the steps. Um, so, yeah, so that's that page. So next is the. Sorry, can you hear me? Because it keeps beeping out. Are you OK? Collect? Can you hear me? No. Yes, we can hear you can't. absolutely per perfectly well. Yeah, it keeps beeping as if I've dropped you. So sorry, no, you're grand. I'll let you, I'll let, I'll let you know. Let so you don't know. worry about okay. it. Yeah. Grand. Okay. So again, the, the this is the important dates on the CAO webpage. Um, there's a timetable, the open days, anything you can. There's dates there for tests and interviews. So it's again a in very informative um, page. Um, so now to make to start your application, then you hit apply. Um, so they, they actually open every year from November. So, you know, hopefully by now you've even started your, your um, application. There's also a very um, good link in there of a, a demo. So it's like a live demo. So you're, you're walking your way through it, but it's not saving any information. So it's, um, it's a good resource too. So school leavers, so how do you apply? So what are the, gen like we talk about general entry requirements. So that's the basic entry requirements to get into to DCU, but then also then there's um, program entry requirements. So some programs have additional requirements like um, say the Bachelor of Education, which is our DC002 program. You have to have five, uh, H5 and three subjects. And um, you also must have a minimum H4 in Irish. So, you know, those kind of things you need to be careful about. Don't be applying for programs that you're not currently studying the correct level or, or subjects like science. You have to have a science subject like um, chemistry or biology. Again, if you, it's in the rules. So if you don't have that, even if you have 600 points, the system won't see you because you're missing the basic, either the entry, general entry requirements or your program entry requirements. Um, so it's very, um, it's very important that you do that. And under every program on the website, it'll give you the entry requirements. So, you know, pay heed to um, what's required for the program you're interested in. We also said, when you go in to make that application, you'll have 10, all our programs in DC are level eight, and you'll have 10 choices. And that's between all the HEIs. So you could have maybe four DCU, you could have Maynooth, whatever. So what we say to you now is don't worry about points. To, you know, be sure you're putting in, them in true order of preference. Like you don't know what way the points are going to work out. The points are based on um, available places. So say on business, your business studies, there's 40 places. Well, that's a bad one. Say um, journalism, there's 40 places. How the points work out is the... The CAO puts everything in order of pref or order of merit, so your points are put into um, order. So it goes down forty places of the forty applicants, and whoever number forty is, we draw a line, and that's whatever points they are is deemed the points for that um, program. So you don't, we don't know what that's going to be. So it depends on who applies, what kind of caliber student applies. So don't be put off by putting. Um, your preference. Make sure you're putting it in order of preference because you don't know what the points are going to be. 
and also don't you know it really should go on preference. Don't be worrying. If you've done your, you know, done subjects, you've sat your exams and you don't think they went as good as they should have, or, you know, you're worried about points and you panic and you change your preferences. Don't do that because you just don't know. It'll find the level. You'll always, you could, you'll never get a lower. So say then you get your points and you see then I would have got B ed if I'd left that as my top points but you changed it, it'll never move down to your second preference, okay? The system is geared to always put you at your, the highest preference. So you, you'll, never, you'll, you'll never go down to a second preference, but you may move up. So say if you got your second preference and then the points dropped and you were indeed then eligible for your first preference, you'll automatically get an offer in a later round, but it will never go down to a second, third offer. So that's why you should absolutely should put it in order of preference. The amount of calls we get every year where, you know, people put down, they, they change their minds and they, they you know, panic. And then, they, you know, they would have got the, their first choice if they kept it at the first choice, but they have went and changed because they, they thought they hadn't got enough points. Don't be worrying about the points. Just put it in order of preference because you never know. You know, it depends on the day. Right. So next option would be mature applicants. So the matures are anyone that's 23, on, of 23 years of age on the 1st of January. So this is a really good option. Um, you, you don't have to have the points for your program. It's literally based on your previous experience, your motivation for a particular course. You, the application is again through the CAO, but under, I think, option or question eight, it'll ask you for your previous um, you know, programs or courses that you may have completed. It's like leave and search or QQI, but there's also a box then for mature. So when you click that, then it's going to ask you for a personal statement. And this is your time to put in your motivation, why you've picked that that program. This is what the program chair, go to the program chair and they're going to assess that based on what you've put in your, your personal statement. Now, some um, programs do have additional requirements like the Bachelor of Education that's set by the teaching council. So you do have to have Irish journalism. You have to submit some sort of um, a document that are uh, um, something that you've got maybe published and nursing. They do a separate, um, a separate, what you say, assessments through the nursing board. So you have to contact the nursing board and make sure you're included in that. And then science, some, pro some science programs require a certain level of maths because, you know, that's the, you're just going to be set up to fail if you don't have that level of maths. So that, other than that, though, all the other programs, if you put in a good personal statement, you have a very, very good chance of being successful. Um, and we take 10%, 10% to 10% of all our programs go to matures. So it's a really good way to get in. So the other um, entry requirement or entry option is QQI. So these are like a pre-university course. They're held in PLC, um, the providers. And again, we take 10% on 62 of our undergrad programs. Um, and it's a really, really good option. If you didn't say you've done your leave and search and you didn't get the points on the, the, the program that you, you really wanted, you know, stand back and think, you know, do I really want that science program? I can do a QQI award in a year and um, it's a really good stepping stone into your degree. And um, so you just need to, again, be careful. Different programs um, have different entry requirements now we've kind of simplified it and um, if you go onto the CAO website and go into QQI here on the left it'll bring you into um, the full list of requirements and the different programs that accept the QQI so you can either put in your if you know your DCU code like DC00 or DC11 for business or if you just put in DCU there it'll bring up the full list um, so say in here then you're, you're what you're looking for when you do a QQI, you get an essential award. So it's a major award. Now, some programs don't look for any major awards, but they do look for components within that award. So like DC001, um, they, they'll accept any, any major award as long as you have a minimum of five distinctions. And they can be any any distinctions. Whereas if you look at Business International here, DC DC one one zero, they have 
stipulated uh, major awards. So you have to have one of these major awards. And within that, you have to have five distinctions and um, it must include one of these um, component awards. So you have to be co covering these modules, basically. So they're like a maths module that they, they um, insist you have. So th there's a huge, you know, most of them are like any, you can have any, any award with as long as you have your five distinctions, but you need to be watching out for these essential awards and um, that you're, you're following what the requirement is because again in the background the CAO we've given the rules to the CAO so they've put in for DC 110 this major award so the rule is looking for that on your results when you submit your results and if you don't have it'll just skip over you and it won't be looked at so you have to make sure you're following the requirements for the QQI. Again QQI is uh, through the um, CAO it's just make sure again what that and that question eight, which award you've, you're applying through. Um, there's also detail in on the CIO website on, on left margin. You'll get all your information in there. The fee tech entry routes, which I just showed you there, but also the scoring system, how they come up with the scores. Um, with QQI, the max score, like most of those programs are saying five distinctions, but a lot of students actually do eight eight modules and the max they get is 390 FPT points. So you're up against, you know, that's that's what you need to be getting. You need to be getting the um, up on the highest points that you can to, to, to because we'll score like we'll take 10 percent. But again, it will be put in merit order and cut when we filled our places by the FITEC route. Another area here under my application is applicant resources. Huge, huge um, information in this, this part of the CIA website. Um, one we particularly like is like this demo. So you can walk through some, some demos on how to apply and there's you know, advice on how to put in an application, what, what the HEIs are looking for. There's also um, the handbook. The handbook, as I said earlier, is it's, you know, it's an e-copy of the handbook and it has everything in it. So you should be really getting familiar with all of this before you start your application. You don't want to miss anything on it. We also in there actually is the alert list. So under my application and applicant resources, resources there's an, er, an alert list. So if we've made any changes or there's any you know new programs that maybe have been late and were missed by the the CAO handbook that we didn't get to publish, we'll add them here. And um, so like that's an example from last year and um, those new programs that we just alerted you to that you may not be aware because they were new. So that, that's always good to keep an eye on the alert list. It's on the CAO website, but it's also on DCU website. We'd have a link into that. So you could, you know, you can keep an eye on that too. All right. And um, so that's basically all the questions are the the, my presentation but if you have any questions you can either email us directly on ugadmissions at dcu.ie or I believe Colette has taken questions there for you for me is that right Colette hi Carol yeah um so not many questions in yet but we'll, they might be coming coming in now um so I know somebody said there, can you talk more about the art department? But I've, I've just said, what, what course are you interested in? So I just need to know that, um, what is it, what their question is exactly? Because just to let people know on this call that um, we will have, I'll just put my video on as well. So yes, hi everybody. Um, so there is lots of different talks on our Unibody platform from five o'clock. So I'm sure if you did uh, see our website about this uh, CAO information evening, you have seen the schedule and there are talks on all our courses being given uh, from five o'clock and you can see the schedule there as well. And Sinead, thanks for that. Um, you can see uh, Sinead has put in the website for that. Um, so that would be switching from the Zoom platform over to the Unibuddy platform and you have to <coughs> register and put your um, details in to get into that site. Um, also on the Unibody platform will be four specific talks um, starting at five o'clock. And the first one will be on our sports and um, sports and well-being department. And that will include um, information on sport scholarships. And that's given by Paul O'Brien, who is our head of our GAA um, uh, department. 
And uh, then at half five, there's a talk from uh, Collectio in the access service, and that will be um, access routes into DCU. So the here route, for example. So that's a higher education access route. And she'll be talking about that. And um, then at six o'clock, then there is a talk for those of you who are interested in um, maybe have a disability or a specific learning difficulty and how you come into DCU through that route also. Um, and then finally, then there is a talk actually on um, alternative entry pathways via QQI that uh, Carol has just been talking about Good now. Um, so that's been given by Paul Hegarty. And we actually have a specific website on our DCU page um, uh, relating to QQI. Um, so there is q and coming in now. So just um, let's see here now. Uh, DARE application route, anything else we need to know? Yeah, so I've just said there that um, there is a talk at six o'clock between at six o'clock on Unibuddy and it's been given by the disability officer and she will talk about the DARE application route. So I hope that answers your question. Is there any funding or sponsorships for pilot studies? Um, so no, um, we don't provide any uh, at the moment. Well, I don't know if in, internally within that department they might. I don't know. Yeah. I don't. Yeah. You need to talk to the program chair. There may be, depending on um, at the time, there could be um, scholarships or at but, least some help. Well, I mean, but again, that, DCU, yeah, it would be yes, external. Yeah. external, yeah. So again, there, there's a talk about that on um on the business studies stream on Unibuddy. There's a uh, one of our students giving a talk on aviation, and they may be able to help you there. And um, applying as a mature student, do I need to take a test for entry? So again, you know, we, I think Carol went through the different yeah. options there. Some of the um some universities just do it on an, an entry test but what we we do at the moment is you make that application that's why your personal statement is really important um, and you may be called for an interview so you'd meet with the program chair and they'd just as you know go through things with you to make sure you'd be able for the course and that is the course you want so no we don't do an actual test it's um an interview it, but you may just get a straight offer so that's why if you put a really strong application um together you you could just get your offer without having to to meet with anybody or be interviewed yeah. now we have a mature student officer in dcu or stafford i wonder will she Sinead or margaret put in uh, orla's email address there so i know she helps out with um applications as well uh if you want to get in touch with orla she might be able to help you out there or send you some information on how to make the strongest personal statement for yourself i know she'd have resources there but even if you go into our website um, and look up dcu mature students there is a lot of resources there that you can have a look at also um i know i think that the link to the anybody talks i think Sinead has already put that there so um and there is Orla Stafford's mature student officer as well um so I'm, I hope you got that link to the unibody um uh how do we uh, receive an update if we won't be accepted do, do we receive an update if we're, if we're not accepted um, it depends what what um what entry route you're coming through if you're matures you'll definitely get um something back to say you weren't successful um if it's like EU or Leave Insert or um, QQI, you won't, you won't, you'll just know you didn't meet the requirements. There won't be anything official. It'll just, you won't get the offer. You won't get the offer, yeah. Because it's a CAO, you might get, you know, a text or something you didn't uh, meet. You, you would get a text saying you didn't meet the requirements or something like that, wouldn't you? Or you, you have no, no offers? You no, you, you just won't have any offers. You won't, yeah. Oh, you won't get any offers. Yeah, okay, Grant. Um, so... So there you go. So yeah, you know, I don't know what um if um G I A D A is that is that person Giada? You might say what sort of applicant you are, and we might be able to help you a little bit more. Maybe you might type that in. Um, and then in terms of mature entry route, do you have any resources or recommendations on how to create a good personal statement? So yeah, I hope you got Orla yeah. Orla Stafford. Um, the she's whole mature... department. So you know, and even when you get your offer and come in, they you know they follow up and you come in earlier and they you know because it could be a long time since you were studying so mm -hmm. there's a whole department there to help you yeah yeah so uh, Orla Stafford is the first point to contact there if you wanted to have um, a chat with her but again DCU Mature um, th there's a great website there and resources on that on, on, um, and then or and then you can contact Orla Rachel that's for Rachel Maloney there and um, so you might be able to contact Orla directly and she'd be able to help you on how to do that personal statement um, then for an EU student come from Greece, would the Greek le school leaving certificate be accepted as an entry requirement? Yeah, what you need to do if you're coming from an EU country, if you actually go in, if you just search in Google. Um, I actually have I actually have a link to that. Um, yeah. 
there's a whole document and it showed like I wouldn't know offhand now, but there, there's a whole document giving, you know, under each country and it'll tell you what they do accept, what uh, award from your country that we accept and how you can compare. So what happens is once you've submitted all your documents, it comes to us for assessment and we convert what your results are into the equivalent um, Irish leave insert points. So it's important that you have all the requirements in there. You, you have to send in your transcripts of your results when you get them. I don't know if you've completed it or you're in the middle of completing it. So it's important. We we'll close that at the end of July. We close that early because um, we, we do a manual assessment on them. So it's very important you get in all your details there and that you're meeting the correct um, recognised qualification for your leave insert equivalent. OK, I've just put in the link for that PDF for that EU um, guideline. Um, OK, so for a mature student, do you know if we need to upload certificates of previous educations as part of the application? Would you also recommend that a mature student take some additional advice in relation to the personal statement? Yeah, again, linking with Orla, but yes, definitely anything you've done that you think is relevant, it will support your application. Um, the, the program chair that's all they have to go on so yeah mm -hmm. any detail you can give that's relevant and um, will stand to you yeah absolutely it will yeah because they need to see um say you have done some course in the past and you finished them so you have your certificates you know it's proof that you are well able to do a, a course of study and that'll show the program chair that you're you know you're um a, a, an able person and able to you know do a course of study and that's really good um back up for you as well you know and applying for your course and um, so yeah um do upload your certificates and absolutely um contact orla who will be able to help you with your personal statement um okay uh toby that's grant for those applying to a mature student route can your application be other qqi and mature application at the same time you'd have, yeah you'd have two goals at it so that's important when you go into that question eight mm -hmm. that you're ticking everything even if you have a mm -hmm. leave insert it will calculate your points um depending like you, you could get in on your points and um, mm -hmm. then you'd be the fet will be another route mm -hmm. and then mature so you'd have three three goals at it and um, important to put everything in and people don't and i've seen that you know and they, they miss believe, out they don't that personal statement we have mm -hmm. really good you know places available and we've not because they didn't put in they think i don't know why they don't you know they don't mm -hmm. put in the personal statement it's a page you know it, it mm -hmm. doesn't have to be you don't it's not judged on points it's literally what you say your motivation mm -hmm. and anything that's relevant now some like the b ed is very hard to get into nursing is very hard to get into but journalism has extra conditions that you need yeah. but it's a really really good option mm -hmm. But uh, yeah, mature. Uh, yeah, but so make sure that if you have done a QQI and a mature and you're leaving, sir, tick all the boxes. Just give yourself every chance. Um, so that's great. Um, our Aaron, our, um, our CAO points the same as IPS points, which are require uh, referred to in the entry requirements booklet that I've just you know that EU um applicants booklet. Do you know that IPS points CAO? They wouldn't be the same. I'm sure there'll be a conversion right there. So I'm, I'm not really sure. No, we definitely convert them and they become CAO points. So yes. Yeah, so so any anything that you've done in your own home country will be converted into CAO points. Go into that link because it does give you, you know, save in your country it's one to ten, and we'd say an eight is equivalent to a H two or whatever. It'll it'll mm -hmm. or a yeah. Um, if, if you want to even, you know, like if you have a, a direct route, you can email studenthelp at dcu.ie and we might, you know, dig in a little bit deeper for you. So can Margaret or Sinead put in our student help at, at DCU email in there as well? Um, and we can help we can help out in any way we can. Um, uh, so, Giada, OK, so if I get an offer on the second choice, so if I get an offer on the second choice and let's say I accept it, but I would really like to enter the, into the course of my first choice, but I don't know if I got that or not. Well, you will now. Well, you see, yeah, your first, your first round of offers, you've got your preference to, um, and people that had, you know, it's it's a very fair system. Like it really works on your preferences, so that's why it's so important. If the point, so you you got your preference two because you didn't have your points for preference one, but then that say preference one was business and preference two was mint, so you got mint. But then all the places for preference one weren't filled. So like people get offers, they don't accept them um, for various reasons. They may have deferred or they financially don't want to come this year. Um, so a place become available. So we go down that list. We, we go down another few 
cross it off, which may bring you up to that level. So you will get the higher offer, even though you've accepted your second one, you you may get a higher offer. So the, um, absolutely, that can happen. Mm. You will never get it'll never. So say if you put it the reverse, you wanted um, mint. You put mint as your preference, first preference, because you didn't think you're going to get business. And then it turns out your points were enough to get business. It won't drop. You put preference one as your mint. That's what you're getting. See, we're happy. You know, she's getting her preference one. It won't go down to preference two, even though you have the points. So it has to be an order of preference. Mm -hmm. If I say that 50 times, like, really, believe me, that's the way it works. Yeah. It's it's see, I was looking to, to try and get you the, the choices you want in order of your choices. So you mm -hmm. have to put it in, pre in order of preference. But yeah, it can certainly go up depending yeah. on available places so yada then you know if you do accept your second choice and you get the chance to get to your first choice of course then yes it is possible to switch okay um which is great um if i do not have an irish citizenship but i'm doing the leaving cert are there any special requirements programs application forms that i have to take now, so we base the application on where you're doing your secondary schooling. So if you're doing a leave and search, you definitely need to put your application to the CAO. Then after that, if you get your offer or, you know, you need to talk to the fee assessment, fee status, that'll determine the entry you come in, the fees you pay. But the the only thing where we're looking for in admissions is where you've done your secondary schooling. Mm. So once you get your offer, then you need to talk to fees and determine um, what the fee status will be. Yeah, because there is, um, again, there is some information in the prospectus and online on how do you determine your EU or your non-EU criteria, no matter what you're doing. So there are special notes there on our website. And I don't know if Margaret would know that page in the prospectus that she could even point it out to um, this person um, that you can see. That, so that will, like Carol says, yes, they will judge it on your leaving search, but it's then- no additional, yeah. So once yeah. you're doing a leaving search, that's what you're-, you're Yeah, assessing. but you're, you're special, you, you might have to pay, um, you know, different fees. So that, that will be the assessment there, okay? Sorry, um, Colette. Yes. Can I just say, I, 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 I was typing an answer to somebody else when that came in. Could that girl who asked that question, the nanny, you said, could she email me at studenthelp at dcu.ie? And I'll, I'll, I'll answer her directly. Okay, thanks, Margaret. That's studenthelp at dcu.ie. Thanks a million. Yeah, Sorry about that. And you get, just put it up there again, studenthelp at dcu.ie uh, for the fees um, question. Um, Thank you very much. I did take everything I could on the CEO mature application. That's great. Good for you. Um, could you maybe talk about the free fees initiative? Again, I don't know what your new set. So, I mean, again, Margaret, you know, if you want to email Margaret, she, she'll provide you those, that information. So it's uh, Noosa, could you email studenthelp at dcu.ie and Margaret will um, give you the There's relevant information. There's lots of different criteria about free fees. Yeah. Like I couldn't answer that without seeing your Yeah. Your, um, so, yeah, exactly. So we need to have the detail behind your application to see how you would fit in there. So Margaret should be able to help before, you. Like they, they, they'll only let you do a degree once. Um, so, mm -hmm. you know, you may have started a degree, completed year one and then gave, gave it up, but then are in now again to do year one again. They won't pay year one. But once you go back into year two, it's your first time to do year two. If you're eligible, you'll, you'll start getting the fees paid again. So it, it really depends. I couldn't answer that mm -hmm. as a general question. OK, yeah. So we need to have the information. Um, um, Elena, so my daughter is an IB student, an IB student in Athens, Greece. She has some GCSEs from year 11. She need Does she need to declare them, number one? And it's the uh, early childhood education is her first choice. Again, like IB, we would look at IB on its own if she's, um, and that, that document there will give you a full list of how we convert that. Mm -hmm. If IB, like she might, she may need some um, for entry requirements if she hasn't covered, say, English, but she did it at a certain level or maybe not English is a good one. But say for matriculation, we do look at other, we may look at GCSEs, but the IB is usually enough if she's done that on you know completely and got the award we okay. would that on its own yeah. grant so ib is usually enough but say for example then if it's not enough and would you ask for the gcse's carol or would you ask for any further we might go back to you if it, it's you know the ib is normally complete you know we, we would never re it's a really simple conversion from ib to, mm. to leaving certain points and mm -hmm. um, so i wouldn't 
you know, put mm-hmm. everything in, you know, put everything in so that we'd have. So you're scanning up your results and um, scanning all your documentation. So if mm-hmm. we have any queries, we, c- we can look through and see, mm-hmm. did you meet it under something else? But like mm-hmm. IB of all of all the quals are is very straightforward. OK, yeah. So basically include everything, scan everything in your application is what you're saying. Yeah, there. So for EUs, you do have to scan or sorry, you have to post to the cao in galway and they scan it up and then review it so it, again all the detail is on the cao website for eu um qualifications okay um if someone applies for dare so this will be a question for maybe um the, uh, the lady mary who's given that talk so if someone applies for dare but at the end is not accepted because of limited seats for dare uh will the application be examined as if it weren't dare as well so yeah, yeah well, you'll yeah. always be assessed. Um, the dare, we've limited places on every. Not every program has um dare entry, but say if you again down your preferences, you might get your first or second preference, but you may get the girls like the dare team would be able to give you more information on how they actually assess it. It's a re, if you're eligible, like you've been eligible for the dare route, then it's down to preferences um and availability, but it's mm-hmm. a good option. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You'll be um, both ways like your points will, you might get it there on merit which means you've met the points for the the program you're applying for but um you'll also then get the supports so you've come in on your own merit you didn't need additional points but the once you're registered then with the disability office you get all the supports which could be exam supports you know depending on what your disability is um you'll, you'll be part of that dare setup so it's um yeah you'll always be you'll always get that extra support yeah, but you will be assessed if you if, say there wasn't, uh, if you didn't get in through there, you would be assessed normally, like you would, you might get an offer anyway. Um, then the, I saw their English language requirements there actually on our website. Um, I think maybe somebody answer that. Um, yeah, well, if you're doing your leaving search, yeah, there's definitely the, the leaving search requirement. But if you're doing a U, you either study through English or you'd have to have an um, additional Cambridge or IELTS mm. or um and that's list, that's listed on our website yeah, yeah. Uh, again Mar- Margaret you might put in that um link for the English language requirements if you don't mind I've uh, done oh thanks so much uh okay so we're, for a student coming from France the final exams take place in July and the results arrive mid-July is there a deadline for sending the results or can they be sent as soon as po- uh, they're available they have to be in as soon as possible yeah but we we're saying the end of July so you should be okay um like we don't close like everything's been pushed out obviously we, we still don't know dates for leaving search but we're we have moved on then so that assessment is finishing we're timetabling that to finish at the end of july so you've got till the end of july or even if you could yeah you know, would you would have any results probably not no the end of july is your deadline end of july yeah well that's fine because you get the mid july yeah exactly. um okay so do a levels only count for ca points if they're sat on the year that we are applying so it's is it not um no it's well we combine them to see the it's so your gcse's and your a and a plus it's over the the two years, two years. That you've done yeah so is it is it uh and margaret you might know this about by heart three a levels from one year and an as from the same or preceding year is that the way it is yeah yeah that's it is it yeah yeah, yeah. So, so again, we don't calculate. That's done in the background. So you make sure yeah. that you've got everything. So ba- you have to make sure that your AS it results in as well in your yeah. CAO. Okay, isn't that right, Margaret? Yeah. Sorry, I keep muting. Sorry. Yeah. Okay. Good stuff. Thanks. I uh, hope that answered that question. Um. Yeah. A levels count for CAO points. So I've answered that. And so I don't know if I have any more I missed. Um. I think that's all the questions there. Uh, I think that's it. The questions which were a lot of. I missed any at all, Margaret or anybody. There's one after coming in there, and that's the tenth preference in terms of actual CA application. Simply complete, add, add our ten choices to commit, submit. We don't need to send any supporting documentation at this point. No, is the answer to that. I'm asking because the CAO handbook is sometimes a bit confusing. The, any all documentation needs to go to the CAO if you're non non Irish applicant, as an EU applicant. Yeah, so EU. Yeah. If that's so student, non EU now, it's international office. But yeah. U, yeah. EU. EU. Straight, yeah. This so individual is from Italy. Mm. Yeah, CAO down in Galway. Yeah. Everything, and yeah. they scan it up and then 
we see it on our system. Here's a student ask about Ukraine, student applying from Ukraine, do they need an 11 or 12 school certificate? Again, so, yeah. I think email st a student help at dcu.ie. Tell us what you have, what you want to apply for, and we'll do it privately with you off, off the platform here instead. Yeah. Okay, uh, just put in that student help there to that one there, Margaret, if you can. Thanks, yeah. Um. So the next one is there. I've, I've completed my pre-nursing and worked in the healthcare industry for a couple of years. And now I have applied to, to do mental health nursing and children's and in, uh, general integrated. Would DCU take into account in giving a place for a mature student with some experience and qualifications? We have nothing to do with no. the assessment for matures. So that's why you need to get onto the nursing board and, mm. and they, there's an assessment with them. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, you'd have mature, but it, I, you didn't say what, what did you previously study? Was it a QQI? It's a anyway. pre-nurse and I would say it's a QQI. Yeah, yeah. yeah so, so, yeah, if you did a quick QQI, um, you'd be in the pot for QQI applicant and, and if you're mature. To, yeah, so make sure with the mature, make sure you contact the nursing board because that's a separate application. And, uh, it's yeah, so it's important. important. So, yeah, well. yeah, I'm sure you know, Mary. Um, I'm sure you know that you have to contact the nursing board as well and do some stuff there uh, for applying for nursing. Um, okay, so uh, Alina, if I do three A levels in one year and one A level the year before, does that one A level, one level count? Um, no. I it, yeah. I, yeah, I think it's three A levels and an AS, isn't it? I don't think that I don't think the A level from the previous year would count. Is it one sitting? Normally it's one sitting. Yeah. I yeah. Don't, sorry, I don't have that. So easy. again, uh, Alina, can you email email, um, look email um, student help at DCIE? And again, we look into that for you, but I don't think so. Um, but do do email us to remind us, and we can help you out in that one. Um, yeah, QQI, yeah. So the pre-nursing for Mary was QQI. So again, Mary, you can apply as a QQI student and a mature student, but make sure that you do look, do look at the information on the nursing board also. QQI, yeah, great. Um, okay, no problem, Mary. Um, Alina, thank you. The application and the application sends it to CAO or the platform has direct access to IB results. So that's um, the Greek um, IB results. So the... The, applica the applicant has to send their IB results to CAO yeah. because the CAO doesn't have it otherwise. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Exactly, yeah. So, Alina, yes, you do have to send your results to CAO. Okay. Um, and please tell me more about the school sports activities. So that's a talk at five o'clock with Paul O'Brien uh, on the Unibuddy platform. So if you can switch over there, you will get all the information that you need on sports uh, clubs and involvement and scholarships etc okay uh, so yeah that's that again international student okay this is an international student the documents needed um, to be sent to the CEO doesn't mention copies of IDs or anything um, are these documents required? So an international student is direct entry. Directly to CAO, or sorry, DCU. So go into yeah. the website and go into, is it global? So if you're an international student, yeah. You have to apply directly to DCU. It's not through the CAO. OK, um, so, Margaret, again, you might give that email for international office, the global office uh, for this student here um, as well. OK, thanks very much. I think we're getting there. OK, so just on yeah. the, the CAO application, just to make sure and I don't, don't know what um, type of people are listening here today. If you're leaving CERT and you've got a school um, email account, this is really important because mm -hmm. I know you're in school now and you're in the head of your school. But by by August, September, your email, everybody, I, uh, the HEIs and CAO will be emailing that account. Some schools close that school account. Um, so you might be missing important um, emails, maybe not from the CAO because they also email or they also put any notifications in your CAO account, but definitely HEIs could be writing to you through that email account and you're not, you've no access. So, you know, if you can, you know, open up a new email account that you know that you've direct access to and you will have, um, you wouldn't be, you would wouldn't believe how many people miss notifications because they, they don't have access to email mm -hmm. um you know you can if you've missed like your C, your exam number make sure you've linked your exam number to your cao application so many me miss um offers that you know they get, get 625 points and they get no offer because their c their exam number wasn't linked to their account um and you know even though we get an uh, like a later file in from the cao of all these um errors 
there's no guarantee that we can give you a place because our places are full. You might, if you're entitled to the place, you may get it, but you have to defer um, till the next year. So it's really mm-hmm. important that you're keeping an eye on all of those notifications that are going to the C- your CAO account and your email account. Yeah, absolutely. Um, yes, just Alina. Yes, you have to send your documents, to your IB results to CAO. They don't. The CAO doesn't have your IB results until you send them. So you have to do that. OK, and um, uh, so just to re, um, re, re, rehash a few a few things I pointed that I took as you were ta- doing your presentation, the CAO has great resources and videos and manuals and everything else. If you just spend a little bit of time to read the instructions and follow them, then you shouldn't go wrong. OK, so that's number one. Uh, uh, Carol, you know, you're so strong about that. So thanks very much. Um, just wanted to reiterate that, that just look at the manual, read it and spend a bit of time to read in, in reading it to see what you have to do. Um, there's there's course entry requirements for a lot of the programs and you have to be aware of that as well. Again, Carol mentioned all that um, and putting your course choice in order of preference is so important put the course that you really, really want as your number one um, uh, um, course of choice. And, you know, and then hopefully, you know, you will get it. But that's so important to do. It has to be in order of preference for your for yourself as well. Don't be um, guessing your points. Don't be guessing. Yeah, it, it, just forget about points. Just do your best yeah. and it'll be put on, you know, mm-hmm. you, you, you find the level. Yeah. Um, so I think that's it and all the questions. So we've answered loads there. Carol, thanks very much for that. A very informative session and great Q&A as well. So I hope everything is OK there. And please do go over to our Unibody platform and the talks will be starting at five o'clock. And if you did go, um, I know Sinead and Margaret shared that link with you to see the schedule. And if you're interested in a particular course, there will be short presentations from our students on the, all those courses, as well as the general ones on sports, uh, here, there and uh, QQI. Okay, so I hope you enjoy the rest of the evening. And thanks again um, very much, uh, Carol, for being uh, the facilitator of this session. Uh, Very, very much appreciated.